Hello, welcome to Library Connection. I'm Mandy Cantrell from the B.B. Comer Memorial Library here in Sylacauga. And today, uh, joining me is one of our local vet veterinarians, Dr. Chad Baxley with Baxley Animal Hospital. Uh, I should know that. We've been several times when we had pets. Thank you so much for taking care of our dogs. You're <laughs> but, very welcome. But thank you for joining me here this morning. Glad to be here. Thank you for Great. having me. It's a cold morning, I know, but we're, it's good to be inside. Um, what what made me call him, I guess, is it's always good to talk about pets and what how we need to care for them, but at the library right now, we're doing a fundraiser for Feral Dogs of Avondale Mill and the Silicon Animal Shelter. They work closely together. It's called Deck the Paws. And for a dollar, you can put a little construction paper, cat or dog ornament, which we have at the library. You can put it on our snowman tree upstairs and uh, you can honor your pet or put your child's name your pet's name a, a, a pet you used to have anything like that and all the money goes to feral dogs of Avondale Mill and friends of the Sylacauga Animal Shelter so I hope you'll come upstairs and do that we're doing it during December and probably we'll do it into January a little bit too so so I wanted to have you on to talk about dogs and cats and pets and things like that. But are, are, are you from here in Sylacauga? I, I am from this area, yes. Oh, okay, good. How, how long have you worked here at, as a veterinarian? We opened in November 2000. Oh, okay. So we've been here for a while. It's been a while, I know, yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's so cold this morning, which makes me think about what do we do with our pets during the cold days that we have during the winter? As cold as it is this morning, I'd bring them in. My car said it was 25, oh, so my. bring them Very in. Cold. Very cold. Uh, of course, different dogs tolerate the cold better than others. Uh, if you have a husky, I guess. Yeah, have a husky, they <laughs> tend to take cold a whole lot better. Right. But you have a small inside dog and he goes out, you don't want to leave him out too long. No. So uh, you get down, some of the inside dogs uh, can go out for a while, but you don't want to leave them outside very long. So. Right. And a lot has to do with acclimation. If they're outside all the time, then they can tolerate the cold a whole lot better. So. Oh, that's true. That's true. So, but generally, uh, if it gets below freezing very much, I bring them all inside. All inside. Especially, huh? and you know, Friday night, Saturday, it's supposed to get down low teens, even down around 10, 9 oh. or 10. So they all need to be inside then. That in is fact, true. I've already gotten calls this morning that uh, people can't take them inside, so we're gonna be boarding dogs oh. this week because they can't take them inside, so keep okay, them Okay, that's true. I know um, I'm uh, allergic to dogs and cats, so I can't have them in my house, but we had a place in the basement right. where they could, it was a little cooler in the basement, but not cold like yeah. outside. Yeah, as long as they have some bedding, <clears throat> In a place like right. that, that would be fine. Something warm. Okay, good, good. And that same for cats too. Same, I guess I think about cats. dogs because I have dogs. Same for cats. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's kind of hard to get a cat inside sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it is. Cats uh, are kind of particular. They are. They are. Uh, so if it gets below freezing, it's kind of yeah, what we need to think start about. Start bringing them in. Right. Okay. Um, we also want to talk about how to, uh, how to care for pets. Um, I know I've had, had dogs growing up and, and as an adult too, um, and a lot of people get dogs for their children and then there's a lot of care that goes into dogs and cats and things like that. What are some things we need to be sure and do to take, keep our pets safe? Well, the rule of thumb, you know, shelter, food, and water. Yes, okay. So always have those available. Uh, food, any good name brand quality food mm -hmm. is good, okay. uh, but stick with a good name brand and okay. quality, quality type food. Um, don't get too high of protein. A lot of people want to go with high protein diets, really? uh, which is not really necessary in dogs. Uh, okay. Cats are more high quality, high okay. protein type food. Right, right, okay. But uh, dogs are not necessarily high protein. Animals. Okay. What about uh, t table scraps? <laughs> no, please stay away from table <coughs> scraps. Uh, mm -hmm. Particularly this time of year, uh, people want to feed them off the table right. in the holidays. Uh, we see a lot of gastrointestinal problems this time of year. Oh, so it actually can cause problems. It then. can cause definite problems. Uh, if you do want to do that, tend to do a little maybe uh, uh, the meat, but okay. no, no fat whatsoever. And human food tends to be a little 
too much fat, a little too much spice, and it gives them a gastrointestinal problem. Oh, okay. Are there things that are poisonous to dogs and cats? I mean, I've heard uh, chocolate, uh, poinsettias, all kinds of things. Uh, chocolate, <clears throat> yes, is poisonous. Okay. So no chocolate whatsoever. Plants that people put out, uh, the poinsettias, uh, amaryllis, all things like that. Okay. Uh, lilies, uh, lily um, causes renal failure. Most of oh, the other pla plants, poinsettias, uh, let me see my list there. <laughs> Holes, pine needles are poisonous. Mistletoe, uh, hollies, amaryllis, okay. all those are poisonous. Uh, <clears throat> please uh, put them where the pets cannot get them, okay? Okay. And if you see any problems, uh, call your vet. Uh, remember, this is a holiday, so a lot of, most of the vets in our area are going to re be referring to the emergency center in Birmingham. Okay. So there are Keep places there that are like 24 hours. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of us uh, are going to be referring to veterinary specialists in Birmingham. Okay. Uh, they're on Industrial Boulevard. They're almost across the street from um, the Home Depot there. So know where okay. they are and know their phone number. Okay. That's good. <laughs> That's good yes. to know because a lot of things happen anytime, especially that. Um, what about taking your pets for walks and things like that? Is it good to take them out and get them some exercise? Exercise is real important mm -hmm. for any animal. Um, we see um, a lot of obesity in pets. A lot of, a lot of pets are being overweight because they don't get enough exercise. Of course, everything in tolerant, toleration, sure, moderation. Yes. So yes. Don't uh, overdo it. But okay. uh, yes, they need some exercise. Playtime is good. Right. Yeah. Um, mine likes to chase his ball all over the house. Oh, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my. Uh, every night I have to throw the ball so he can chase it. Really? So, okay. That well, kind good. of thing is real good, too. Probably keeps his mind active, too, a little bit. Oh, of yes. Social, mm -hmm. yeah, there. Well, I know some people will say, well, my dogs are outside and we have a big b backyard. Well, you know, I have a treadmill at my house, but I don't get on it. <laughs> so having a big backyard doesn't mean your dog's going to run around. Right. A lot of times you'll look out and they're just laying there. Right. So you right. need to get out and have interaction with them. Right. And, uh, That's good for us and them. And them, yes. So. Very important. That's true. How about cats? What do you yeah, think? they need some playtime, too. We, we see okay. a lot of overweight cats oh, as well. Okay. So they need some things to do. and uh, People help do that. Okay, so. yeah. We need to provide the entertainment kind of Yes, thing. exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. great. Well, that's part of having a pet. So. It is. Yeah. It is. Well, all right. We're going to pause for a commercial break and we'll be right back. Senior Adult Activity Center offers to senior citizens in the Sylacauga and surrounding areas lots of fantastic activities throughout the week. Sewing, ladies bridge, quilting, game rama ceramic classes, bingo, travel club, and lots more. It's all at the Maxi Vizi Senior Adult Activity Center located next to the J. Craig Smith Community Center in Sylacauga. Don't spend any more time alone. Get out, make new friends, and have fun. Sylacauga's best kept secret? No more. Harvey's on Noble is the place to go for the area's best food and drinks. Whether you're in the mood for steak, burgers, salad, seafood, or dessert, Harvey's on Noble will not disappoint, and the atmosphere is perfect for catching the big game or just relaxing after work. Harvey's is open for dinner Wednesday through Saturdays. So round up the family and we'll see you at Harvey's on Noble, downtown Sylacauga. Great. What am I going to do now? Time to visit Brown's Auto Collision. No problem at all. We've contacted your insurance company and we can get you back into regional condition right away. And I just want to remind you that all of our work is covered by a lifetime warranty. We're done. Wow, that was easy and looks great. Brown's Auto Collision. Where quality is no accident. Welcome back to Library Connection. I'm talking with Dr. Chad Baxley from Baxley Animal Ho Hospital here in Sylacauga. And we're talking about pets, of course. Um, I know we talked about how to keep them in shape and well fed. What about so socializing them with other animals or with people? How do we do that? And is it important? <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it's very important. Okay. Uh, if you 
Um, we get them in the clinic sometimes and the owner will warn us they don't like other animals or they don't like oh. cats or things like that. Right. So we'll uh, adjust our time where they'll come in the clinic where we don't have other animals in. Okay. Uh, so uh, it, you can socialize them even, uh, especially when they're young. Okay. And, uh, so they're accustomed to being around um, other animals. Um, that really helps, uh, and it, sometimes other people. Sure, sometimes dogs sure. don't like other people, so that really helps uh, for us to handle them, um, and uh, we can bring them in without the fear of them attacking another animal or things like or that. You. <laughs> or you, or us. Yes, yes. Yeah, that is so important. Um, and that that's very important. All right. And so to, to do that, you said do it when they're young, or yeah, it's that, that, good it to start Yeah, that helps. It uh, helps when they're younger, because uh, a lot of times when they get older, they're kind of set in their ways. Yeah, we all are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, well, that's a good idea. So if you get a, if you get a puppy. Get yeah, a puppy, yeah, and, and okay. uh, they're around other animals and, and other right. people. It, it helps a lot. Good, good. All right. Um, pets and kids, I know it's great for them to learn the responsibility. It is good. Uh, it's good for the animal and good for the child. Oh, some of them grow up together, don't they? <laughs> they do grow up together and uh, they're around each other. They're, you know, pretty much the animal's life. Oh, gosh, and, yeah. And I can tell you, we have so many books at the library. I do pet story times a lot, <laughs> or dog story times or cat story times. A lot of, a lot of books about um, getting a, a dog from the animal shelter or finding a stray pet, a stray cat or a stray dog or uh, having an older pet that dies. That's one of those hard things, but there are books uh, and that helps. I think if you can read it to a child who's lost a pet, it kind of helps put some words to the, the way they feel. It, it yeah, does. It does. Uh, anything, yeah. anything, anytime you can do something like that will help. Right, it's right. very difficult losing an animal. It, it is. It's literally like a member of the family. They are. I know. Our, our fur babies, I think, is the new the new term. I find it. What about uh, spaying your pets and neutering? I know that's a big a big thing. It is a big thing. Um, extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many strays out there, and oh so many uh, animals out there. Um, you just, I mean, you drive down any road anywhere around here and there's animals everywhere strays everywhere and so all sad. the all the shelters are packed right, right. and uh, uh, of course spag and neuter helps with that it does. you can get rid of them or prevent them from having more yes, yeah. uh, it's just you would not believe it how many animals are out there Oh my goodness. Now you work with feral dogs of Avondale Mill and the animal shelter here in Sylacauga, right? Yes. What, what do you do with them? Uh, well, my job is mostly spays <laughs> and neuters mm -hmm. and uh, try to prevent more strays. Right, uh, right. So, uh, but animals getting, you know, like I said, they're getting dump, dumped off everywhere. Oh, I don't understand that. It's so sad to me. Uh, that's, that's probably <coughs> one of the most important <coughs> things that you can do. Uh, Health-wise, too, there's a lot of health issues okay. uh, involved. So. I know. Um, years ago, we got dogs from the an animal sh shelter here, and you were the vet they referred us to to have them mm -hmm. uh, have yeah. them fixed, so to speak. And uh, it was it was a very easy process. Yeah, <laughs> very it's, easy, it's, yeah. it's a, a day surgery. We do it that day and send them home that afternoon. Okay. So. Wow. Now, do you work with, uh, I know uh, feral dogs of Avondale Mills gets dogs and, and sends them to other places where people would like to, uh, would like to uh, adopt them. Yes. Do you work with them with that or you, you're mainly in the spay and neuter? We're mainly in the spay and neuter. Okay. Uh, we let uh, feral dogs handle that aspect of it. Yes, yes. Well, that's great. Well, and it, it, it does cost, it's sur surgery, but it's affordable if you're going mm -hmm. to have a pet. You, and I think people need to think about the cost of pets and things yes. like that when they get ready to have one. Because you've got heart, heartworm or vitamins or whatever you give your dogs. It's right. real important. <laughs> and going to get your shots every year. Uh, it is. Um, you keep, keep the vaccines up to date. Uh, we see a lot of diseases. Uh, 
keeping their vaccines up to date, keeping them on heartworm prevention. Okay. We see a huge amount of heartworm disease. Oh. And, uh, keep them on flea and tick control. Okay, yeah. Now the heartworm, do we need to do it during the cold weather too? Uh, <clears throat> yes, because the cold weather doesn't last. That's uh, true. Because <laughs> even in January and February, <clears throat> we'll see temperatures get back up in the 60s and 70s. And uh, heartworms are spread by mosquitoes. Oh, okay. Mosquitoes come out and right. they're out to get heartworm disease. That's true. Uh, even if your animals are strictly indoors, it just takes one mosquito and mm. they can get heartworm disease. Oh, and that's and, a terrible. And terrible we've seen disease. that a number of times. Uh, we'll have people say, well, my dog doesn't go outside at all. They go on a pad, but oh. they'll, we'll test them for heartworm disease and they'll come positive. Those little mosquitoes can get in the house. Uh, okay. Yeah, just crack the door and a mosquito come in. Oh, that's true. That's true. Wow. Um, well, um, so we know why we should do it, and so we just call you to sk schedule that to have our schedule kids spayed. Schedule and we'll get them in and uh, and take we'll care of it. Take care of it. That's great. Wow. Um, we are, I will mention again, our f fundraiser at the library is called Deck the Paws for a dollar, and just a dollar more if you want to give, you can get a little construction paper ornament from us, either a dog or a cat. Put your pet's name, your child's name. I know I did uh, several for pets I've had all my life and put them on the tree, and all the money goes to Feral Dolls of Avondale Mills and Friends of the Han Animal Shelter. They work together so yes. closely yes. now, so that'll Very be close. good. Uh, all right. What can we do to help them? Things like this, I know, <laughs> giving money. This uh, will help. Uh, donations always help. Right. Uh, but even volunteers going out and helping with the animals. Okay. Just walking them, giving them some social interaction. Right. Will help. Um, okay. uh, food always helps. Um, cleaning things supplies like and things yeah, like that. Yeah, cleaning supplies, things like that. Um, getting your animals spayed and neutered helps. Mm -hmm reducing the animals they have to take in. Right. Like I that. have seen too where they will let you come out and walk, I know you mentioned coming to walk dogs and that helps the dogs be mm -hmm. so socialized with people. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes to uh, uh, adopt a dog, they can say, yes, I've, I've walked this dog several times or I took them out for the day or right. they're that used to being all, around. That all dog. helps. That's great. Um, but fostering, they always need people to foster animals. Right. What do you know? What all is involved in that? I know that's not what you do, but uh, right. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, you got there. Uh, uh, I'm not sure of their exact application process. Right. But, uh, okay. Go out there and let them know you'd like to be a foster. Okay. And take one or two animals home, and you basically uh, have them until they find a permanent home. And I think they they provide all the things you need I for believe the dog. That, yes. that is a great way to do it, especially puppies mm -hmm. or, or yes. kittens, you know, mm -hmm. to foster them. That's a great idea. Well, we're going to pause for another commercial break, and we'll be right back. The Maxie Beasy Senior Adult Activity Center offers to senior citizens in the Sylacauga and surrounding areas lots of fantastic activities throughout the week. Sewing, ladies bridge, quilting, game rama ceramic classes, bingo, travel club, and lots more. It's all at the Maxie Beasy Senior Adult Activity Center located next to the J. Craig Smith Community Center in Sylacauga. Don't spend any more time alone. Get out, make new friends, and have fun. Sulacaga's best kept secret? No more. Harvey's on Noble is the place to go for the area's best food and drinks. Whether you're in the mood for steak, burgers, salad, seafood, or dessert, Harvey's on Noble will not disappoint, and the atmosphere is perfect for catching the big game or just relaxing after work. Harvey's is open for dinner Wednesday through Saturdays, so round up the family and we'll see you at Harvey's on Noble, downtown Sulacaga. Great. What am I going to do now? Time to visit Brown's Auto Collision. No problem at all. We've contacted your insurance company and we can get you back into regional condition right away. And I just want to remind you that all of our work is covered by a lifetime warranty. We're done. Wow, that was easy and looks great. Brown's Auto Collision. Where, where quality, quality is no accident. accident. 
Hello, welcome back to Library Connection. I'm talking with Do Dr. Chad Baxley from Baxley Animal Hospital uh, here in Sylacauga, and you've been here 20 years, 20 years or so. Yeah. That's About great. 21. Wow, that's great. Uh, I know you've, um, you've is, is that how, how long you've been a vet, or were, did you work somewhere else? No, I've worked several places. Okay. Um, started out in Foley. Oh, okay. And yeah. down south. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish I was down south now. Oh, yeah, it's so cold <laughs> today. Yes, I can't mind uh, Then I worked in uh, <clears throat> Meridian, Mississippi. Okay. And then uh, decided to come home. Well, good, good. That's great. Uh, now, I know you also work with the Coosa County Animal Shelter, which is not open yet. It's not open yet. Yeah, uh, tell us I, about that. I do work with them. I'm actually on the board. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the process of uh, remodeling. It's the uh, old uh, Sturtville Fire Station. Okay. Uh, it's at the uh, intersection yeah. of uh, <clears throat> Highway 150 and 41 okay. in Sturtville. Uh, we're getting it remodeled. Uh, it's a slow process, but oh, we're sure. getting it. That all takes so. a little while, and you can't just throw up a building. I mean, it has no, to have it, certain specifications. Yeah, I'm sure. certain specs and uh, things have to be done. And, uh, but we're getting there. We're looking to open uh, around the seventh of January or so. Okay, so, there, so. pretty soon. That's so, great. Pretty soon, hopefully. Good. God willing, we'll yes. get there. Good. That is a process to open oh, a shelter, gosh. isn't it? Uh, yeah, yes, it is a process. <clears throat> and uh, getting uh, people together, getting uh, 501C, okay, all yeah. that done, yeah. having an attorney, and getting with the county commission and uh, all the city councils. You have to get okay. funding together and all that kind of stuff, volunteers. And, it's a long, drawn-out process. Gosh. So, well, so y'all been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, it's it started um, back last spring. Yes. Okay. And, uh, or last first year, I guess. And, uh, oh, it's wow. been going. About a year. Yeah. Wow. So, so is there a real need in Coast County? There's a real need everywhere, There's I guess. There's a need everywhere. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, but, uh, the state requires every county to have their own okay. animal shelter. Yeah. And, uh, as well as some cities, over 5,000. So. Okay. What, what do we do, like, if I find a stray dog and I can't keep it? Is there a process? <laughs> well, you should, um, if you can, take it to a shelter. Sure. Uh, you know, like I said, right now, all the shelters are full. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's trouble finding a shelter that can, can take it. Um, that's that's the big problem. Okay. Yeah. Shelters are doing everything they can, but um, it's when you're full, you're full. When you're yeah, yeah, when you're full, you're full. You can't do any more. And I know some people I've heard will take the pets and just leave, take the animals they find and just leave them there. That's not a good idea. I mean, like at night or something. Yeah, that's not a good idea. It, it's it's hard to do, <clears throat> and. Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of one of those things. What do you do? Yeah. Type thing. Just, you know, call around till you find somebody that can take it. Okay. All right. What is a no-kill shelter? A no-kill shelter, by definition, is mm -hmm. one that can save ninety percent or more of their animals. Okay. Yeah. You're always going to have ones that are that come in that are too sick to save right. or too injured to save <clears throat> right. and you just can't do it. Right. And, uh, that's where they came up with around 90%. That's, that's true, that's true. And I guess if you have pets that have been lived in the wild, I say in the wild, on their own mm -hmm. for years and years, that would be hard for them to adapt it is. to a um, home. Like but, uh, some cats were just too feral to tame. Oh, that's true, that's true. Uh, so that's where a lot of times where your trap, neuter, and release comes in. You just neuter yeah. them and release them back. So yeah. Cats are not so hard. Dogs are much yeah. more difficult. Cats can catch mice and oh, yes. chipmunks and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, that's great. But there is a real need in our area, right? I know uh, feral dogs have worked so hard and gotten, you know, have have taken in a lot of pets and had them sent other places to be adopted. Right. Um, and. We're, yeah, they're flying them out and sometimes wow. taking them on, in cars and 
buses and stuff up north. Yeah. Uh, places up north uh, have a lot stricter rules. And oh. So they, uh, a lot of animals have been taken up north. Oh, okay. So. I always wondered why, why can't we keep them, I mean, I want those animals to go to a good home, but I always wonder why we had to send them off somewhere. But most well, people here have pets. <laughs> well, that's the yeah. thing. Most people down here yeah. do. Yeah. And, uh, uh, there's a lot more animals down here than there are up north because the laws up north are a lot stricter than okay. they are here. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm, I mean, I'm glad. And it takes a lot of people volunteering their time and their own money to drive them and fly them. And a lot. The uh, it takes a lot of people and a lot of money. Yes. So, uh, yeah, donations are definitely needed. Right, right. And I know I follow uh, Feral Dogs of Avenue Mill on f Facebook, so you can kind of see the things that are going on, the dogs and cats that are up you know that they'd love to have somebody come adopt so yes. um, do that for, uh, even friends if you just foster for a while that will help right. okay good uh, well I will before we're through now I want to mention at the library we're doing deck the paws which is our fundraiser for Silicon Animal Shelter and Feral Dolls of Avondale Mill. For a dollar, you can put a little construction paper ornament of a dog or a cat on our tree. Uh, you don't have to have a pet. Uh, maybe you had a pet growing up. That's what I did. I've got all my pets' names on there. Uh, and all the money goes to the Silicon Animal Shelter. And it makes a real pretty tree, we think, upstairs, too. Uh, so please come in and do that. We're, we're doing it during December and probably we'll do it into uh, January a little bit. We decided this was the snowman tree. He could stay up past Christmas because <laughs> we like it. And come in and check out some books. If you're thinking about getting a dog or a cat, we've got books on pet care. We've got books on, uh, on children and pets, adults and pets, stray animals, adopting a dog from a shelter. Uh, uh, the loss of a pet is another big one. I know at, at Christmas, I guess a lot, a lot of people get pets for Christmas. I don't know. <laughs> so, so please come in and do that. Let me say one other thing, yes. if I may. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people want to get their parents okay. a pet or their grandmother a pet. Yes. Uh, please, please do not do that unless you talk to them first. Oh. Because every year we'll get someone in that says, uh, my grandchildren got me this pet. Oh. And I had other plans. I wanted to travel, or I oh wanted to my. do this, or I wanted to do this. That and is a great point. I'm then just, yeah. I, and I had other things planned. Oh my! Please, please talk to them first before you get them a pet. Please. That is a great point. I'm glad you got there before our time is up. So thank you for joining me, and thank you for joining me on Library Connection.